Okay, we're coming to Unit D. This unit provides an overview of providing transportation services to students with disabilities. There are a large number of unique situations related to working with students with disabilities, including special equipment on the bus that is used by the students, having an aid on the bus, securement of uh, special equipment, medical issues, and so forth. Now remember to jot down any questions you might have along the way since this is a narrated session and I will attempt to answer them at the end of this session. IDEA is a federal law that mandates that school districts must provide transportation services for all students regardless of their disability. Further transportation needs can be written into the student's individual education plan, or the IEP. Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 prohibits discrimination against anyone who has a disability that impacts life functioning. Reasonable accommodations must be available to students with medical needs if the school district accepts federal funding. The school bus operator's responsibilities when transporting students with disabilities or special needs goes beyond that of regular education students. In cases of students with special needs or disabilities, written policies and management plans for students should be kept by the school bus operator in a safe location, but available when needed. Also, seating charts can be useful, if seating is, of course, assigned so that students may be more easily identified in the confusion following a crash. If anyone asks questions about particular students, their disabilities or needs, do not discuss this information with them. One exception to this is in emergency situations in which others may need to provide care to your students. Information needs to be available to substitute bus operators and discussions may need to take place with the parents of a particular student, teacher, or school official. Beyond these, do not discuss student disabilities or needs with anyone. Be aware that some students with and without disabilities may have unusual medical conditions and wear a medical identification tag to help alert bus drivers and emergency responders to their condition. Such medical conditions may include asthma, autism, cerebral palsy, diabetes, epilepsy, or severe allergies to drugs, foods, or insects, among others. Guidelines for managing students will be discussed along the way, and we have a memory aid that will help us to do that. S equals special. Every student is unique. The more you know about them, the better you can accommodate them. T, in start memory aid, is treat equally. Students with disabilities want to be treated like other students. When possible, require the same rules. A equals attention. Some students may misbehave to get your attention. Giving attention when behaving properly may reinforce appropriate behavior. R, in start, equals restraints. Special seats or restraints may be required. If your bus is so equipped, learn to use these devices properly. Tie down wheelchairs when the bus is moving. And T, techniques. Sometimes your techniques to maintain control of a student's behavior may not work. Try something new. Keep trying until you find a technique that works. Here are the 10 cate categories that are used to identif identify students with disabilities under IDEA. We'll reveal each in more detail. Aut autism is uh, listed among them, and as you can see, these are some of the uh, um, characteristics of autisms. Remember that it is a disorder, not willful conduct, conduct something that they necessarily would have uh, control over. Beyond autism, we have those that may be deaf and or blind. A combination causes severe communications and developmental needs. The deafness and hearing impairments uh, may range from some degree of hearing loss to being totally deaf. Students rely then on sight and touch. And these are just some of the things here and these characteristics that we need to be aware of as we transport those with special needs.
When communicating, always maintain eye contact. Speak clearly, slowly, without shouting. Repetition may be uh, useful and necessary. Next is emotional disturbance. That's an inability to learn. Um, not explained by typical factors. There are some things that they have difficulty with as you see them listed here. Students are commonly included in general education transportation when they have emotional disturbance. Again, it's important that the driver be calm, fair, firm, consistent. Treat them as much as possible like the other students uh, that you uh, transport. Metal retardation, sometimes the obvious is overlooked. For example, putting one student per seat may be helpful. And um, just be aware of anything that helps in transporting those that have these special needs. There is multiple disabilities. Sometimes these disabilities occur in combination, excuse me, combination with the same student and uh, it could get rather complicated at that point. Then there are those that have orthopedic impairments. As with mental retardation, individuals with orthopedic impairments may have a wide range of skills and needs. Special education staff, occupational therapists, and mobility therapists may be most helpful in understanding and accommodating students' needs when they have the orthopedic impairments. Other health impairments, uh, there's epilepsy. It's just a nerve disorder uh, accompanied by seizures. Um, students may know when a seizure is coming on, so you need to be careful to communicate with them, keep them calm, um, move the student to a place where they will not strike hard objects with their hands and uh, keep them safe as possible. It's important that you do not restrain the student. You can guide their limbs, say their hands from striking things, but do not restrain them when they're uh, dealing with epilepsy. Other health impairments uh, include Tourette syndrome. Again, this is a neurological disorder. Um, if you are driving a bus with special needs, a lot of these things that we're just glancing through today, you will deal with more specifically. Uh, this, this is just a time to give you a general overview of the needs that are out there and what special needs drivers uh, really need to contend with. Other health impairments, ADHD, we've heard that one before. Here are the types listed for you and some of the characteristics of ADHD. There's also speech and language impairments, communication disorders, uh, the students may be difficult to understand because of their speech impairment. Always be encouraging. Be a happy bus driver. And don't always uh, just concentrate on correction. The traumatic brain injury, TBI, it's an inquired injury to the brain. They may not have been born with it. Uh, it's something that happened to them that damaged their brain. It can be mild or severe, as the pop-up shows here. Visual impairments. Students can't see clearly. Maybe don't understand what they are seeing. That sort of thing. Very important that uh, your bus stops are identified and maintained where they are approved. Um, it could be at the student's home. Most of the time, probably it will be where you pick up and you unload. Make sure that uh, it's appropriate for loading and unloading and that you're off the highway and everything is safe. Uh, very important. Keep in mind that Act 124 prohibits the owners and drivers of any diesel-powered vehicle of a certain weight from allowing the engine to idle more than five minutes in any continuous 60-minute period. However, Section 4603C allows a school bus transporting students with special needs to idle for an unlimited amount of time when it's necessary to maintain a safe temperature for the students.
In general, if you pull your bus into a parallel parking space for loading and unloading using your lift, you do not need to use your eight-way light warning system. You must use your hazard warning lights, but you do not have to use your eight-way system. There is another section of the Pennsylvania School Bus Code which says this, Use of red signals, the red visual signals, shall be activated by the driver of every school bus whenever the vehicle is stopped on a highway or traffic way for the purpose of receiving or discharging school children except as provided in the subsections E and F. The signal shall not be terminated until the school children who may have alighted from the bus have reached a place of safety or until boarding school children have completely boarded the bus. It goes on to state limitations on use of signals. The visual signals required in the regulations shall not be actuated on streets in urban districts designated by the department or local authorities at intersections or other places where traffic is controlled by a uniform officer or appropriately attired persons authorized to direct, control, or regulate traffic, or in school bus loading areas designated by the department or local authorities when the bus is entirely off the roadway. In other words, you do not need to use your eight ways to load or unload when you are in designated areas where it is proper to load and unload without the eight ways, or if there is a policeman, um, uh, guiding, directing that you should load or unload, especially at the scene of an accident. So don't worry about these things. Keep in mind that the vehicle code's definition of a roadway is that portion of a highway improved, designed, or ordinarily used for vehicular travel, exclusive of the sidewalk, berm, or shoulder, even though such sidewalk, berm, or shoulder is used by pedicycles. In the event a highway includes two or more separate roadways, the term roadway refers to each roadway separately, but not to all such roadways collectively. Parking lanes are not part of the roadway because they are not designed or ordinarily used for vehicular travel. They are used for parking. The vehicle's code definition of a highway is the entire width between the boundary lines of every way publicly maintained when any part thereof is open to the use of the public for purposes of vehicular travel. The term includes a roadway open to the use of the public for vehicular travel on grounds of a college or university or public or private school or public or historical park. Therefore, if the area in the parking lanes has been designated as school bus loading area, the eight ways are not required. If you have an unusual circumstance that may be confusing, Contact your local law enforcement personnel to make a final determination of the appropriate use of the eight-way systems. Just to make it real simple, if you are clearly off the highway, no portion of your bus is on the highway, then you do not need to use your eight-way system. Your hazard lights are sufficient and they are acceptable. When you're on the road, uh, rely upon the aides to care for the students as you're moving down the highway. Uh, make periodic checks whether you have aides or not. Know the students and their needs as much as you can and know what to look for. Never leave a student at a bus stop unless a parent or guardian is there. They cannot be left alone. Special needs children, students. Check local policies to discern, determine procedures if no parent is available. Normally what you do is you'll just radio into the school and say no one appears to be here and they will try to contact the guardian. School vehicles are those designed to carry 10 or fewer passengers including the driver. They're called school vehicles. Children under four years old, four years old must be secured in child safety seats. Children four or older but under eight years old. Uh, must be in uh, uh, proper seating as well. Law does not address the use of child safety seats or booster seats on school buses, only school vehicles. They're probably thinking pretty hard on that. The last I heard was that they're 
thinking about installing seat belts in the first two seats on each side of the bus. So there would be four seats total that would have seat belts. But that is not law yet, and that has not come to the point of being manufactured yet. Let's take a look at some special equipment that is sometimes used on special needs vehicles. And here you see some of the things that are listed. They must use ramps and there are certain qualifications for the ramps, where they are, how they're built, put together, so on and so forth. Some buses and cool vehicles are equipped with lifts. You'll be educated on how to properly use a lift if you are assigned to a special needs school bus. And then, of course, there is emergency procedures and evacuation drills. And this slide here in particular shows uh, what would happen during drill time and what paperwork is necessary. And you would be educated in detail during a simulation of an emergency drill as to exactly what needs to be done at the time of an emergency and need for evacuation. This completes our session regarding students with disabilities. Uh, we'll discuss uh, answers to any questions that you might have.